Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com Okay, so it's been kind of a, um, I'm not sure what, how to phrase this, but I'm going to use the word issue, but it's probably, maybe not, maybe it's a pattern. So it's kind of a pattern that I've been noticing with uh, some of you guys and also people online. So myself, I've been pretty blissed out lately, but I've noticed how the, okay. So the best way to say this is the energy to me is really smooth. I mean, like right now, like there's been no wind lately. The skies are clear. The, the night sky is just beautiful, crystal clear skies. You can see the stars sparkling and it's just been very calm and very peaceful. Now, that might just be me. That's very possible. Um, but I do notice for sure the weather, you know, the energy in the air is pretty calm. And people at stores are going slower. I've noticed that too. People are just kind of taking their time. Now, what I've noticed though is there's kind of a, um, how to explain it. I'm just going to spit it out. I don't know how to, the, the, to say this in a correct way. So I'm just going to kind of start from A to Z. It's like the energy, it's it's really grounded, very clear, very calm, and yet it's really fiery and topsy-turvy, like, like out of nowhere. So it'll be really calm all day long, and then all of a sudden there'll be some just ridiculous blow-up or something weird happening. All right, so I'm going to leave that at that. So I guess all I'm saying is overall, if you're if the energy where you're, you're at has just seemed like very calm and just peaceful, and yet at the same time there's a I don't know how to explain this this ex kind of explosive explosive energy intermittent, just kind of go with it for now. All right, so this video is about about okay, I'm just going to read this off. So why do some people just fade away? or just kind of disappear from your life. The ultimate answer is because you're you are raising your vibrational level. That's one way of saying it. Now I'm gonna go kind of go back and use the psychology terms, something Tony Robbins said, NLP, etc, etc. And even physics. Oh and by the way the music will go down in about a minute and a half. Okay, so first I want to say, I think there's a combination of reasons. I don't think it's just one reason. And all of these reasons I'm going to spell out, spell out in the very beginning. I think it's three, maybe four. Those are, they're all essentially the same thing said in different languages. So when I say languages, I mean unconscious languages that people speak. Now let me give you an example. Okay, so if you go to like a... Um, an eye doctor, they will say like the peripheral system and then the foveal system, okay? So that's an eye doctor talking. Now he's talking about your nervous system, okay? Now if you go to a, um, let's see, a neurologist or maybe a psychologist, they'll, they'll say like the linear system versus the nonlinear system. Now these are the same exact systems, just using two different languages. That's what I mean. So a lot of times you talk to one doctor and they'll say it in one way and then you'll hear something from another doctor not realizing they're saying the same thing just using different words or a different language. So when I was in the military, I was an airborne infantry by the way, we have a completely radically different language than the average person walking down the street. If you were to sit next to someone who's really been in the military for a while, who's probably still in the military, they will talk to other people in the military and you're kind of like, what, what does that mean? What does MOS mean? What is it? And they, they literally have all these acronyms and all these shortened phrases. And you're going to be, it's literally a different language. Airborne infantry uses words that the regular army infantry don't use. Same thing with the Navy. The Navy has a completely different set of words that literally is a language that I wouldn't understand because I wasn't in the Navy. Even the Marines, even though they are connected to the Navy, they use a different set of terms and shout outs and all kinds of stuff. 
the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of times you could talk to a psychologist or a psychiatrist and use a term that they're not familiar with and they're like oh okay so you're so you're crazy oh okay and you're just saying no I mean when I visualize this no okay it, now that's another series of languages you got visual auditory kinesthetic and auditory digital languages so auditory digital the bottom is when you're th in your thinking brain that part of your brain some people use that a lot some people don't use it at all um, let me go to the top so visual is when you're using your visual system I see what you mean that looks right I picture uh, I can see that, you know, I can picture that. And then auditory, I'm pointing to my ear now, that I hear what you're saying, tell me, talk to me. These are all connected to your ear, whereas the first one's all connected to your eyes. Then the third one is kinesthetic, which means touch and feel. And they, they'll use words like, well, you know, when I, when I can get a hold of that feeling, you know, it touches my heart. And it touches your heart? What are you talking about? So... A lot of times people use different sub languages and there's all kinds of sub languages and you could be talking to a doctor or psychiatrist okay let's say okay let's say you got in a lot of doctors are very auditory digital right um, let's say you're visual and you and you image things you visualize things and you say you know it, in my mind's eye when I see a picture of this person blah 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 I'm like so you're seeing things in your in your in your head huh oh okay sounds like schizophrenia to me now here's the funny thing it works the other way around let's say you have a doctor that's very visual and you say and, and and they're not auditory at all and you say you know when i when i hear myself thinking you know when i talk to myself inside my head they're gonna be like wait a minute you have voices in your head oh definitely schizophrenic gotta write that down And yet, what do most motivational coaches tell you to do? To say positive affirmations, either out loud or internally inside your head. Alright, so let me get, get to this. So there's different languages that people use. So, alright, so one of the things I learned from psychology, and also really it was at a Tony Robbins seminar. He, he made a real big point of this. So we're at this seminar, and we are just learning like the predicate system, which I just shared with you briefly, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, auditory, digital, and all, and all kinds of representational systems and stuff that we do unconsciously, and how to motivate yourself, and not, not just raw, raw, but you're actually learning skills like, oh, I didn't know that. So if, you, if I picture this up and to the right, and then have it zooming towards me fast, that'll have more of an, an impact on my emotions. Like, yeah. So when you take these classes, you're like, holy shit, I did not know that we could do that. And then when you go back home and your friends and family are looking at you like, wow, what's what's your deal? And you're like, well, what are you talking about? I'm in a really good mood. They're like, yeah, like, what's what's your problem? And you're like, wait, what? So Tony had said, he had said, look, I need to warn you. When you go home, your friends and family may not be exactly welcoming to who you are now. And I didn't really quite get what he was saying now you gotta understand he spent at least an hour explaining this and breaking this down and i just kind of looked at him like oh, okay yeah you know he but he made it really clear and it wasn't till i went home and i was like it took it took me probably a month to go what the hell is going on i'm gonna break it down right now so I went to Tony Robbins Awaken the Giant Within. It was a three-day seminar. It was called the Fire Walk. Okay. It was amazing. At the, at at the end of the thing is the first night you walk across hot coals. It was it was just awesome. You are I cannot explain it. You are excited. You are happy. You it's the thing is like the biggest thing is like you suddenly go oh wait a minute. I can start a business. I can be a champion kickboxer. I can do this because you're realizing all I have to do is take steps and get stuff done and take action and do this, you know, learn better strategy. Like you suddenly you start to, it's not even like, oh, I believe in myself. Yeah, yeah, I believe. No, it's, it's not believing. It's knowing like you suddenly go, oh, because as, as a world, we, we are surrounded by negative people to the maximum. It's insane. It really, you know, when you're on a championship football team or baseball team or kickboxing team one of the biggest things they, they they tell you is like don't let people get in your head like you know just like stay together guys you know avoid people don't let people bring you down don't let your friend i mean it's really a huge psychological game because the majority of people are so effing negative 
they don't even know how negative they are. They just uh, in their in their world, like, well, this is normal. So, let me let me make a very very uh, specific example. So, I came home from the seminar. And I was a young guy. Uh, my mom had asked me to move back in. I think it was 19 years old. I was living with my dad. She convinced me to move back in. So I think I might have just turned 21 just after I moved in. Or no, 20. And um, what was the deal? Um, I came back from this Tony Robbins seminar. And I was just, boom, reading books, doing this, doing that. Going to practice, work, going to work. going. To, I had two, taken two classes at the local college. I was just on it, man. I was on top of things. I was getting things done. And my mom goes, what's wrong with you? And my brother and my sister would just give me shit like, dude, look, what's your problem, man? Look, what the fuck's going on with you, man? Now, I'm actually saying it quite lightly right now because I'm trying to keep this, this uh, energy positive here. It was actually really intense. And this went on for about three weeks or four weeks until one day, I don't know if I was eating breakfast or lunch, but I remember sitting down at the kitchen table and my mom just looks at me. She's like, I, f I don't remember what she said, but it was really simple, like, are you okay? And I looked at her like, what are you talking about? Like, why do you keep, like, what, what, like, what, what do you think's wrong with me? And she goes, I don't know. You just don't seem like yourself. Beaten down, depressed, suicidal, you know, that stuff. So I looked at her and I go, I don't understand what your problem is. I go, let me ask you a question. Since I've came back from the seminar, have I been happier or have I been more depressed? She goes, no, she goes, you've been a lot happier. I go, have I not been more full of life or more depressed? She goes, no, no, you're definitely more full of life. And I, and I named off all these positives and she said, yeah, you're definitely more this and all this really good stuff. I go, so what's the problem with that? And she just kind of froze and she went, huh, I don't know. So I essentially said, so just leave me be. I mean, I'm in a good space. I'm happy. I'm this. I'm motivated. I'm excited I'm for life, etc., etc. So because I was in the San Francisco, I stayed at my dad's house, which was, which was in Mountain View, about 35 minutes, or maybe not that far, probably 25 minutes south of uh, San Francisco. So I stayed there because it was closer. And every morning when I woke up, they were all looking at me like, what the fuck? They're like wide-eyed looking at me like I was a crazy person. And I'm like, what's wrong well michael you know something different about you i don't know michael i don't know if the seminar is good for you i mean this is kind of weird i'm like what's weird about it and i said the same thing to my dad i mean dad am i happy he's yeah you're really happy i'm like why is that a bad thing he goes i don't know have i said something mean to you guys no i go have i been nice like yeah you're very nice I'm like so what's the problem so it that was during the seminar, and then after the seminar, I went back home. Is I lived in a city called Vacaville, close to Sacramento or towards Sacramento. And then when, at, when the next three weeks or so, my family was just kind of harassing me, like, eh, you know, it's getting mad and upset and miserable. And like, well, what's the problem? And my mom finally realized, like, man, I guess nothing. I mean, you, uh, this is all positive stuff. That's how negative a lot of people are. They're so negative. They're at such a low level that when somebody walks in the room that's in a good mood, it really, it, it upsets them. Now, here's the deal. It is being negative. It is lower vibrational, but they're not actually being purposefully negative. They're just kind of like, it's like, you're different. You're not like me. At this point now, I'm like, yeah, who gives a rat's ass? But that's not what this, that's not what this video is about. So I remember having that conversation with my mom, the last one, when she finally realized, like, wow, I guess there's nothing wrong with this. And I, I went, I was in college. So I remember I went to college and I'm, it's, it was about 15, 17 minute drive away. And I just, my mind was pondering that conversation because I thought, God, what a weird weird experience I've been having with my family members and even some of my neighbors and they're all looking at me like oh what's wrong with you and I'm like what's wrong with me I'm taking action I'm getting things done I'm making things happen I'm in a good mood I'm 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 friendly I'm happy and in that that Tony Robbins that caught that hour speech he gave us like hey man when you go back 
it may not be as nice as you think it's going to be. It's going to shock you because you think when you come back with all this happiness, with all this joy, that they are just going to love you and they're going to be like, wow, this is amazing. Oh, no. So here's what Tony said, and I learned this in psychology class too, but it really had an impact when Tony said it because he really spent a lot of time and broke it down. Essentially, it's this. People, when they first meet you, they open up. Okay, who is this person? What do they think? What do they believe? What do they value? What are their habits? What are their phrases? What are their rules and decisions that they live their life by, etc., etc.? So they will stay open for the first couple hours, maybe two hours. No, more than two hours. I meant two or three days. Maybe even a, maybe even take a month to open up every time they see you. Like, okay, I got this person. I've got them figured out. I'm going to put them in this box, and this is who they are. Period. And then what they do is they literally go back to sleep. So in the beginning, they unconsciously open up and they pick up on your habits and your verbiage and your sayings, your body language, and then they go back to sleep and they go on what we call automaton. It's literally a program that runs and they're, they're not even there. I'm telling you, when you become really conscious, you're going to look at someone and it will scare the crap out of you. Like, Holy shit, they're, they're like robots because these are called meta programs. We literally have these programs in our brain that put us to sleep and we just run off the program. Oh, this is Michael's program. This is how I talk to Michael. This is how I interact when Michael does things. Like people, most people are completely asleep. Now that's really what we learned in NLP. Uh, uh, they really broke that part of you know the psychology down, the unconscious parts that we have that we use, etc. So essentially here's what, ha what happens. Most people are unbelievably mentally lazy. They just run on programs. They don't want to waste any time or energy on being aware, being conscious, or even consciously listening to someone in the moment. It's just automaton, auto automatic responses, automaton, automaton. They're like robots. And here's what happens. Because they're so lazy, when you go to a seminar and then you come back four or five days later or whatever it is and you have massively changed and you're sharing all this new information, they have to wake up again. And they're like, okay, who are you now? Now here's the thing. They don't want to wake up again. They don't want to have to relearn you because it takes effort and it takes energy. And they have to pay attention in real time. And for most people, that's just too much work. And if they're unhealthy people and they, they're insecure like a narcissist and they want to keep you down, essentially what they're going to do, it's not even a narcissist that does this. A lot of the majority of people will do this. When you shift and when you change and their automatic responses to you are not working, they're like, whoa, and then they have to wake up like, wait, what's going on here? Like, oh shit, he's changed again. So here's what most people will do. Instead of embracing your growth, embracing your learnings, embracing your, your energy level, your spiritual level, your vibration going up, they beat you back down. Because they already have a bunch of programmed responses for who you are or, well, who you were. And they don't want to have to relearn how to deal with you again. So they just beat you back down or do the best they can. And it can be vicious. And I mean breaking things, cursing, yelling, screaming over absolutely nothing. It could be, hey, could you please hand me the sugar? I mean, they will just lose it. So when none of those tactics works, worked, then they went and attacked Tony Robbins. Oh, well, he's, he must have brainwashed you. He must have done this. He must have done that. You know put a lot of doubt in your mind and oh he's a bad guy I mean and like well have you ever been to a seminar well no have you ever read his book well no and you're like well how do you know and they're like hmm shit damn that was something we actually learned at the seminar <laughs> and and they're like oh damn shit he got me <laughs> now it's the same way if you go away to college or you go live with one parent who moved to, to another state and then you come back two years later and you're a completely different person because you went to another state that has different values, different rules, different beliefs, different sayings, different everything. So now the family goes, okay, well, who the hell are you now? 
And they will attack your friends at, over in that new state. Say, oh, well, they're just weird. That's just a really weird way to talk. Or that's, and they literally will attack the source. I remember the first time after the first day, we all went to dinner around 5 o'clock before we had to come back for the evening session. And about, oh God, 30 or 40 of us filled this one restaurant. Now, I had been to that restaurant the night before. And I didn't really consciously realize I'd kind of recorded the experience in my energy or brain. But when we went back, I remember how it was before people came in. And then after, and the whole energy shifted, the whole dynamic shifted. And that was one of my first conscious awarenesses of energy level and vibration raising. It's almost like the light became brighter. So essentially what happens is this. Here's another way. So we had psychology, Tony Robbins slash NLP. Now you have energy healing. Your energy has shifted to a higher level. Physics. It's a vibrational energy that's vibrating at a faster rate. And all of this is causes dissonance between people whose vibrational level is not at the same level that you're at. I mean, we can look at this as in music, as in like, you know, certain if you strum, if you've ever played, played the guitar, you can actually see the strings vibrating and sometimes they don't vibrate in harmony. So when your vibrational level is at a, at a rate that doesn't vibrate in harmony with other people, it causes dissonance. It causes a sense of stress or even chaos. Now, for some people that are, that are very positive people and leaning in that direction, it can cause them to take a leap in vibrational level. Or it can cause them to take action. It's like something triggers them. It may even piss them off or irritate them or hurt them. But as they begin to process over the next couple of days, weeks, you're like, well, like, why did that bother me so much when Mike came home? It might cause them to shift into, you know, I need to go to therapy. I need to do yoga. I need to meditate. I need to go to an energy healer. I need to read better books. I need to stop watching TV so much. It can cause them to make shifts in their life if they're leaning in that direction to go to the next level. Level. All right, so there's a grocery store that is really close to me. I just do not go there anymore. There was just like such dissonance and the vibrational level, the energy level. It was obvious. It was like really, really obvious. Like they did not want me there. And the funny thing, it's the neighborhood that I live in. So now I go to another neighborhood up about a mile and a half up and boom, I fit in fine up there. It's a wealthier neighborhood. It's a more educated level, etc., etc. Now to use energy terms, it's it's like the one here is just dark. It is it's just it has very it's low vibrating energy if we could use that term. And the other one up north a little bit has a higher level of vibration. So people tend to respect me more, they tend to treat me better, they just tend to be they, they get their energy gets along with mine a lot better. And that's a really way, good way to look at it. Call it science, call it physics, call it whatever, but it's a vibrational speed or rate. Does your rate harmonize with other people's? Doesn't mean they have to be at the same exact rate, but is it within range? So why do some people that you've known for months or even years suddenly just kind of pop out of your life they don't answer phone calls they, and and nothing happened there was no argument there was no fight there was nothing like really happened they just kind of don't return your calls anymore they kind of just don't talk to you it's because you shifted and it, you know here's a good way to explain it so your energy shifted like the vibrational rate and here's an example of what someone had said to me when i went back like a year later like like what is i kind of got mad to go what is the problem what did i do and they were like you didn't do anything i'm like well what is it and like I, I they're like i just can't relate to you anymore and i said did i do something wrong am i being weird they're like no it's not that at all i just like i just can't we don't click anymore we don't you know, I'm going to use this word, we don't vibe. So here's the deal. One thing you have to understand is like, okay, I'm looking at my old family situation and they were just in this really, really deep, dark place. It was really just a painful, suffering, angry, hate-filled, you know, nobody was happy. Almost more than half of them were hooked on heavy drugs. It was just a place of where they were at. That was their level. And 
to expect him to shift from that level to a higher vibrational level, it's just not reality. But what happens when you come along, it's like you're showing them, like, look, there's a, it's, it's not even that you're doing anything. You can just be eating breakfast or reading a book, mind your own business. But your energy level is expanded. And what happens is when they come in the room, their energy expands for a moment, but then they freak out and they shrink back up. And then they start to yell at you because they're trying to get your, your energy to shrink back down like theirs is. Because, because your energy is so expanded, it causes theirs to expand and it freaks them out. But that's growth. You've gone through that. You've gone through. This is what Dark Knight of the Soul is. Here's essentially what it is. So Tony Robbins calls it circle of influence. So you draw like a circle that's about two inches in circumference or whatever. Okay, two inches across, let's say. And he said, here you are in the middle. And within this circle, you can go up, down, left, right, to the bottom, right, bottom, left. And you, can, you have power and control within this circle of influence. Or you have influence within this circle of two inches. But then let's say you go to Tony Robbins seminar, you read a book, or you meditate, and you, you just do things, you go to therapy, and all of a sudden, or you, or you find a way to make more money. Now, you were comfortable working with this many clients a week, or making this many sales, you could handle it, but now you, wanna, you want more sales, you want more of this, but then you got more of a challenge. Now you got to deal with new customers, you got to deal with new this, whereas before you'd like, you know, I, I like my customers, I can deal with that, I can handle that. In other words, your program is like, hey man, I've got a program for these type of people, this level of people, these group of people that come on a daily basis. I don't really want to relearn a new way of doing things. Because if you expand that circle to make go from... I don't know, let's say $6,000 a month up to 12000 Now you're expanding outside of your boundary of influence. Now you have to learn all this new stuff, and that is a painful process. And that is exactly the same thing that happens when you come home from a seminar or a retreat or something that massively shifts you or you've been even listening to my videos i am telling you right now beyond a shadow of a doubt my energy is having an impact on your energy period end of sentence the learnings that you are learning is shifting you on every level not just a logical intellectual level or oh, i learned something new it's affecting you on an energetic level so you're making these shifts. Now, even without me, you guys are making shifts. A lot of you that enjoy this channel, you are on that path. You are on the path of growth. You're on the spiritual path. You are constantly learning and growing and expanding. See, what ends up happening is it causes those parts, little parts of you that are little personalities that broke off from the core you that used to be one with you, not separate, when I mean separate, I don't mean once it comes back inside, it's separate inside this little ball. No, it, it there is no ball. The inner, it's like you're pouring water into water and it becomes one. It's not like all these different you know, droplets of water individual inside the glass. Like, no, it's just one. And so what happens is when these parts get triggered and they, be, they slowly become to realize, like, wait a minute, I'm not Mike. I'm a separate tiny small droplet of Mike no 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 and then they freak out and then what happens is because it's almost like they're dying it, it, to them it's like oh I'm dying and and I'm telling you every time I clear a part that's exactly what it feels like and it'll last for weeks sometimes months and it's a it is dark night of the soul or whatever you want to call it it is a very scary thing but when you get through it you're like oh that was just an illusion I wasn't dying the bad things weren't happening you know, it really literally was an illusion that you were recreating because that's what a part does. It recreates these illusions. So when you shift and expand and see that circle of influence expands when more of these parts begin to become conscious and go, wait a minute, I'm not actually real. I'm like an illusion of a part of Mike. I'm not actually Mike. And then eventually they realize it and they collapse back into the, into the wholeness, the core of you. And now that you begins to expand, it's like dropping droplets of water. Like I got a gla half glass full right now and you keep putting droplets of water, it gets higher and higher and full and full. It, it, in other words, that circle of influence begins to expand. And going through that process is it's it can be terrifying so here you are learning growing and changing your energy levels vibrating at a higher level etc or higher rate etc etc 
and you start hanging out with your friends and family and and people that you know boyfriends and girlfriends and husbands are like whoa 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 because it causes their energy to catch up it causes their energy to vibrate at a higher level and they're like eee. so their circle of influence is here and they're like yeah screw that I don't want to expand. I'm done. This is scaring the crap out of me. I don't want it. And they freak out. They'll yell at you. They'll scream at you. They'll be little Tony Robbins. They'll be little that book that you read where you learned something that had a major emotional impact and it shifted you emotionally. And they will just like, oh, that's weird. Or that person's brainwashing you or whatever it is. They don't actually believe that. It's that they're like, look, I'm in my comfort zone and you're causing me to have to shift if I'm spending time with you. And then it causes me to have to deal with my issues, the parts, and I don't want to do that. Now to say me, I don't mean me. I'm talking like second, how do you say this? Second hand is <laughs> the other person. So what happens is these people will push you away. They'll close you out. They'll emotionally shut down. They won't open up to you because see, that's the thing. If they open up to you, they're open to shifting their vibration and they're like, fuck this. I'm, it's like, it's like there's what do they call it. The crabs that are in holding onto the rocks at the bottom and they, and they, every now and they see someone let go and they, they begin to fly, you know, and they, and they begin to go where they want to go. They're like, oh, wow, that's weird B because they don't know what happens to the person once they go away. So they just cling to the rocks, they cling to what they know, and that's it. Because this is what they know, and this is their comfort level, and that's it. Okay, so I remember I went to this, I don't even know what she was. She wasn't a therapist, she was kind of like, she was, she had like her, I think, AA degree or something. She worked for this organization, but she knew, she said something really, really key to me that made a really big impact on my life. So she had said, she said, Michael, now my sister convinced me to go to this lady because she had gone, been going over for a while. She was Michael, you got to go talk to this lady. I'm like, okay. And it was specifically about this. So I'm like, yeah, okay. After a while I went and she goes, has there ever been a time in your family's life when the bills were paid? Uh, the kids got good grades. Nobody was in trouble with school or with the police and nobody was hurt and everything was fine. The car was running good. Well, I'm like, well, yeah, of course. And then she goes, and then what would happen? I go, I don't know. She goes, no, 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 Michael, I want you to really think about it. Go back to a time when everything was good, the bills were paid, had plenty of money in the bank, had spending money, and blah, 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 like, and everything was calm. Everything was just good. So I went back to one of those times, and then I was kind of running through it as, you know, the days and weeks went by, and, you know, at least a week or more, and also I was like, oh, my mom would just, like, out of the blue start yelling and screaming and cause absolute chaos. And I remember looking at her going, wow, that, you know, like kind of confused, like that. And I think I even said like, that doesn't make sense. And I, and as I, and, I, and as I had this realization, I realized she had done this our entire lives since I was born. And this lady, this counselor had said, do you know why? And I was like, well, no, not really. And I, I mean, I said, cause she's crazy. Okay, I'm just joking. <laughs> so anyway, so she had said, here's why. Even though your mother wants the bills to be paid and she wants to make extra money and she wants to have a lot of money in savings and, you know, have a good solid car. The reason why she causes chaos is because that's what she knows. I remember my mom's relationship was going really well with my stepdad. And literally one day out of the freaking blue... She just starts yelling and screaming. I remember looking at my mom like, like, what you're saying is not even making any sense. So what this lady said to me, she was, Michael, the reason she does that is because she grew up in chaos. That's all she's known. She goes, essentially, what has your life been like? I go, yeah, it's been nothing but absolute yelling and screaming, throwing pots and pans and chaos and like, yeah. My mom literally broke my stepdad's arm. Now, this was a strong dude. She literally broke his arm. Another time, she threw this big, like, uh, kind of like a buffet, like a ceramic bowl, but a big one and had a big round edge. She threw it across the room when he walked in the front door and boom, it was like not the front door, but the side door to the kitchen area. 
and he had to go to the hospital. I think he had to get 13 stitches or something like that. They cut him all the way down to the bone. Now here's what I'm saying. Even though the stuff she was accusing him of or yelling at him about, it was completely fabricated. It was it was a fantasy in her mind. Now here's why though. And just now let's just watch this. When people are in their circle, and this is what they know, this is and this is what she said. She goes, she goes, Michael, she's even though she doesn't like chaos, even though she doesn't like problems, even though she doesn't like the car to break down, even though she doesn't like to be poor or having to borrow money and all that stuff. That's the world that she grew up in, and that's what she knows how to deal with. She has strategies to deal with these things. And I went, huh. It, it, it made a lot of sense because we talked about this stuff in psychology class and in, in NLP, Tony Robbins seminars, about just about parts in general, not about this issue. But what happens is when people are outside of their comfort zone, you're thinking, wait a minute, chaos was your mother's comfort zone? Yes. I remember the first time I walked into a Buddhist temple and there was nobody in the big, the big, uh, what do they call it? Temple area where they, where they all gather and the monks will preach and pray and all that stuff. I suddenly, it was this big wide expanse and it was so peaceful. It wasn't just that area, the entire temple, everything was peaceful. And I got scared for a moment. I was like, but I had meditated enough to be like, oh, I know what this is. It's because there's no static, chaotic uh, uh, energy. Every, every, even when I walked in there, like, hello, even the way they said hello, the energy, the vibration, the monks. Now, here's what it is. I'm a very core person. I'm very grounded. I've got a, a my, I'm just going to put this, my energy is very clear and calm and grounded inside. So a lot of times when people come around me, they're like, whoa, they kind of, they don't know how to handle that because they've never been around that energy, even though it's more peaceful. They're not used to that yet. They're used to dealing with chaotic people. The majority of people that you know are just chaotic inside. They're just scatter, 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 scatter. Very rarely will you find a person whose left hemisphere is in sync with the right hemisphere. When you meet me in person, you will experience that. You will feel it. And it will affect your energy. You'll go into rapport with this. And your hemispheres will go into sync for the first time probably since you were born. It's a very healing, it's a very nurturing energy that's very emotionally grounding. It's wonderful, it's peaceful, yet for a lot of people when they actually enter that space, it can kind of throw them off. Like, whoa, because because in my space there is nothingness. And most people are used to just, just energy ping-ponging off the walls, in their head, left and right, in their, their hearts pitter-pattering, they've got anxiety. It, most people, like, I remember when I started coming out of my anxiety, when I'd meditate and get to that just unbelievable state that I live at right now of just nothingness. It was amazing, it was wonderful, but then after a while, it was kind of like, yeah, something's missing. <laughs> and I would go back into that chaotic energy, thinking, 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 and talking fast, blah, 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 you know, just all that crazy stuff. And the longer I meditated, the more I went to energy healing, the more I would hang out with Buddhist monks, the calmer and calmer, and, and then it became a place of comfort. And then it became familiar to me. And now I spend a lot more time there. And of course, I'm sure there's one or two narcissists listening right now. And they're like, oh, he's not always that way. Or I'm sure I could scare him. I'm sure I could put a, you know, you could, you could blow up a bomb outside my window and it would rattle me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and so, so I'm not saying that I'm this perfect person, but when I want to do this consciously, I can do it in a moment's notice. Do I get caught up in other people's energy? Yep, absolutely. Sometimes, not always generally they'll collapse into my energy but you will be surprised how often and how grounded I am compared to the average person I think you would be more than shocked I think if you were to, to spend any amount of time you'd be like what's going because your energy inside will shift beyond a shadow of a doubt so essentially even though you may be shifting into a much more loving peaceful uh, space of clarity 
and calmness, the people around you, because they're not used to that space, they're not, it doesn't, it's not, how did I say that a second ago? Hold on. Okay, I got it. Even though they like it, it's not familiar to them. So in a long, long, you know, roundabout way, hopefully I've educated quite a bit. This is the reason why some people just shift out of your life because that that's not where they're at. And now here's another point I want to make about this. Very important. So I had someone in my life that was really the most precious person in the world to me. And I helped raise this kid. I was a big part of her life for about probably one, two, three, four, four and a half, probably six years, I would say. And we, toward the last two and a half, maybe even three years, we started going our separate ways. She was going down her path. She would come over uh, when she was stressed, when she was upset, when she was kind of uh, freaked out, when she wasn't grounded. Because just by being in my space, she would ground. I mean, it was like she would literally just come over. She was, can I just like be on the couch? And like, I'd look at, yeah, sure. I'd be on the computer. I'd be t talking to a client on the phone. And, and she would just fall asleep. And there was another technique I would do. I would go up to her and I'd put my, I'd put my left hand behind her head, then my right hand on her forehead. And then I would flow energy through her and then essentially ground her. Not essentially, I, I would ground her and it would only take about probably a minute and a half to three minutes and she would just, man, you could just see the, like her, her pupils would dilate. She would just completely shift and just like breathe deep. So believe it or not, even as much as she needed that and liked that and it worked for her, she had kind of, uh, not kind of, absolutely had dissonance with me uh towards the end and it was yelling and screaming and i was just looking like what the hell's going on here and to be honest with you i'm just right now really figuring out what it was about now she may have said it was because of this like my mom was accusing my stepdad of some bullshit it wasn't that it was the dissonance in energy because my stepdad was a very calming figure. This guy, when he was home, all the kids calmed down. It was really nice. It was kind of like being in temple where the energy was just clear, just grounded. It was just quiet. It was calm. And my mother, to everything I know and experience with her, like in every story I've heard, she grew up in a very chaotic environment. Our, our entire lives were, it was a constant whirl, whirlwind storm of chaos. So calm environments didn't work for her. So with my, with my, with a young lady, my goddaughter, she needed to go down her path to learn what she had to learn. And she has to have contrast. Okay. It's, it's not just her. All of us do this. I went through it too. It's like, you have to have this extreme contrast. Sometimes you have to experience energy to such an extreme level even if it's chaos that you realize like wow this is just too much i have got to somehow get out of this so then they'll begin the journey of going in the other direction of peace and harmony and meditation and yoga and whatever and now all of a sudden you're beginning to develop this contrast going oh because okay here's what i mean If all you know is chaos or certain energy or certain way of being, a certain way of thinking, that's all you know. And people could even point it out to you, therapists, like, hey, man, that's not healthy. That's toxic. You know, what are you talking? Okay, if you take, for example, for me, abuse was being grown up by a narcissist parent. <clears throat> abuse was connected to love. And I remember therapist after therapist be like, Michael, that's not love. And I'd look at them like, what are you talking about? And I would just get up and walk out and never go back. Like, wow, they're weird. It took an extreme level of being hurt for me to just have my heart and soul just ripped out for like the last time for me to just be like, I don't want this anymore. And so then I, you know, meditated in therapy and I, and I was going through NLP and all this therapeutic stuff anyways. And I really began to learn over a period of time, like, yeah, that's not love at all. But I, 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 I wouldn't have been able to see that until I popped out and went to the complete opposite end of the spectrum and then turned around and looked back. And this is what it means when it says once was lost, now I'm found. 
you could live on such a negative energy or chaotic energy or lazy energy or whatever it is and until you until you experience the complete opposite end of the spectrum you're just looking at people like what are you talking about those people are weird and then when you experience it let's just say in my case that level of peace and nothingness you're like wow this is really nice so it's not again it's not either or it's think of it more in terms of having options and possibilities so now you see it's like the the further you expand your perspective and your, your horizon you know all the way from zero all the way to 180 degrees different perspective like all the way over there the wider and wider you make this now you've got a full range of options and choices and everything in between and now you know how to get over to that that range that level or you can shift to the middle or shift to the left a lot of people are like stuck in one what's the word i'm looking for one degree of range versus a hundred and eighty or three hundred and sixty degrees of range you want to expand that range so you can go from 180 degrees to 179 to 154 to three degrees to two to one you want this expansive range the wider the range the more your flexibility the more your influence on yourself and others and especially your emotional experience in the world so right now it's kind of popular to say you know I, I meditate or I'm grounded a lot of people that are not grounded at all I'm grounded and you're looking like and you're like stuck in your head what are you talking about but they don't know because they've never truly been grounded so until you physically have these experiences you're just like even when you believe you're grounded you you may not really be that grounded so here's the way I approach life now I essentially tune into the energy of the room or the group or whatever it is and the one thing that I don't do anymore I don't try to change them I don't try to get along I don't try to almost like you're working out an energetic deal like hey just let me be at my energy and you can be your energy. like people don't do that it's like no dude your energy throws my energy into a different realm or it throws my energy off I don't like it I don't want you around and I'm fine with that I'm like okay well I don't fit in here so I'm just gonna move along now here's the deal though eventually what's going to happen even if you don't move along they're either going to force you to leave or they will leave so that is why people walk away even though nothing happened and nothing went wrong so if someone in your life that you deeply love and care about suddenly starts freaking out yelling stupid shit and you're like wait what i never did that i never said that, that never happened and they're like flipping out yes you did or you know or whatever just realize like oh our energy does not coincide anymore there's a lot of chaos between our energies it doesn't doesn't vibe it doesn't it doesn't flow there's just a greater sense of dissonance and in some people's cases their journey is over with you and they're supposed to go down a certain path to have certain learning experiences whether painful or positive or negative in order for them to go to the next level because you you got to understand you can't just skip first grade second grade third grade fourth grade math and jump up to algebra you know without having the basics or algebra too you have to build through the learning experiences and that's why you have to let people walk away now if you're in a committed relationship a marriage or even a committed committed love relationship or like on a football team like hey our goal is to win the Super Bowl so from the first day of triple days or double days there's gonna be a lot of dissonance and even if you're in a relationship for a while and there's dissonance if you can work through that dissonance and raise each other's level and create a level of harmony you will have the most amazing experience in the world everything falls in line everything sinks even when you're going through a chaotic experience together such as a football team when people are smashing and crashing but you are committed to finding that harmony again you will be blown away at the levels that you reach the levels of love the levels of ecstasy the levels of financial power and wealth success happiness joy it's the level of spiritual attunement of just being able to think of someone and know what they're thinking or turn and look at them and literally 
talk to them even though they said nothing and they and they're like wow that's exactly what I was thinking communicating without communicating is one of the most amazing experiences of a, a, a group or a couple can ever have it have it in their entire lives Hey, this is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. If you've liked this video, please click subscribe, click the like button. Go ahead and make a comment, and if you want, you can make a donation. There's a PayPal link right there in the description box. God bless you guys. I truly hope you enjoy this video.